Welcome back to another video with us here at LMD and STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the June 2022 Physics Unit 2 Paper 2, and we will be working specifically on question 1B, which is a question based on Kirchhoff's law. So the figure below shows a circuit consisting of resistors connected in series and in parallel. And so you see we have this very intricate circuit here that's being powered by this nine volt um, power supply here. And then we have our resistors R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. And then we have a variable resistor RL that's in the middle here. Okay, so we're being asked to calculate the current IL that is flowing through this variable resistor RL when RL has a value of 30 ohms, okay? So we're gonna just go ahead and add that 30 ohms wherever we see RL right off the bat. So that's where we're gonna start this question. So we're gonna just drop in our 30 here, okay? 30 ohms for that resistance there at RL. Okay, so now whenever we see an intricate circuit like this, you know, right off the bat, we can see that there are two loops, right? We can see that this is one loop where our current is coming off here, coming in here, and then coming out here. And that would be our current I1. Let's just call it I1 that goes through that resistor. We said that, that current hits a junction here and breaks off into now IL coming down here. And then coming over here now, continuing on, would be I2, right? The current I2, then that goes through that resistor and it's going to come down and enter this resistor as well. Okay, and then similarly here as well. All right. And then if we come back over here, the current, the same one I1, when it comes here, it's now being called IL as it goes through RL. But once it comes out, it's I1 again, right? And it will just be I1 going in here, okay? Into the 2.5 ohm resistor. Okay, so let's break this down now based off Kirchhoff's laws, right? So let's start by looking at Kirchhoff's first law and how we can apply that to make this circuit simpler and get our ultimately the value of I, I, L, because that's what we want. That's our unknown. That's what we're seeking in all of this. So Kirchhoff's first law, let's start there. So Kirchhoff's first law says that if you have current entering a junction, then that current is going to be equal to the sum of the two that are leaving the junction. So here's the junction, I1 is coming in. So what Kirchhoff's first law says is that I1 is going to be equal to I2 plus IL because they both came from I1. So it makes sense that when you add back up these two, I2 and IL, that you would get I1 because I1 is where they all came from and then they broke off like that. So Kirchhoff's first law is also, you know, it's based on a conservation of charge. So it's saying that whatever current comes in has to be the same that comes out, right? So it's a conservation of charge. That's what that first law is based on. And so in so doing, in so writing out that first law, we have just got one of our equations that would be very helpful in being able to, you know, really break down this whole circuit. So I'm going to just put beside this equation here. Uh, just call it equation one. So that's I1 is equal to I2 plus IL. All right. So now we, as I said earlier, we can see very clearly that there are two loops here, right? There's a loop that goes this way. So like a clockwise loop. So we're going to call this first area here, our loop. Let's call that loop A. And then there's another loop here where the current is coming that way and coming back around. Okay, so we're gonna call that one loop B, right? So now we're gonna apply Kirchhoff's second law and that will be helpful in getting a second equation. Okay, so let's write that here now. So we're gonna write Kirchhoff's second law. Kirchhoff's second law. And that second law is one that's based on conservation of energy, 
right? This is very important for us to know that what is being conserved because it will help us to piece the law together if, if for some reason we forget it, right? Conservation of energy is what the second law, Kirchhoff's second law, is based on. So what the second law says is that the sum in a loop, in a given loop, the sum of the EMF, so the EMF that's in this loop, loop A, right? So let me write that. So for loop A, I'm going to do it for loop A first. So for loop A, right? When we look at loop A, this is the EMF. So the second law would have been the sum of the EMF is equal to the sum of the potential differences in that loop. So the EMF is 9 volt, right? So that 9 volt then, I'm just going to put 9 there. That 9 volt is going to be equal to the sum of the potential differences in that loop. So this potential difference in this loop will be, um, so the PD is V is equal to IR for those resistors, across those resistors. So I'm gonna do my I that's flowing through here, which is I1 times that resistance there, which is what? Five, right? So I'm gonna do five I1 for my first PD in that loop. Then the second PD in that loop will be what? I L times the 30. So that will be added on there. And that will be 30 I L. And then the other one now, the bottom one is I1 times the 2.5. So that would be plus 2.5 I1. All right. So the sum of the EMF is equal to the sum of the PDs. So that's what we just wrote here. We can make this equation a little bit simpler, and then we're going to call that equation 2. So 9 is going to be equal to, we see 5i here and 2.5i here. So that will be 7.5i1. Right, we're just grouping the I1s. And then now we're going to have 30i2. 30il, rather. 30il. Right, 30il. That guy right here. 30 times il. That's what we have here. So I'm just going to call this my equation 2, and that was that I, that was derived from loop A. So that's my equation 2. I'm going to just label that 2. Right? So now let's look at loop B. So I'm going to apply Kirchhoff's second law to loop B. So let's write that one underneath here. So then we will say for loop B, similar thing, right? The total, the sum of the EMF will be equal to the sum of the PDs. But when we look at this loop here, guys, we take a close look at just this loop, loop B, just this section here, we don't see an EMF as we have over here. So there's no EMF for this loop. So we're going to set that first part equal to zero. So right here is going to be zero. So zero is equal to the sum of these guys, right? So that will be um, this is I2 right here. So that will be I2 times the 5. So that's 5 times I2 for my first um, PD. 5 times I2. And then that same I2 is going to come down and come through this 10 ohm resistor. So that would be 10 times I2 for that second PD. Right? And then it's also going to come here again. Same I2 and go through this 15 ohm resistor. So that would be 15 I2. And then take a very careful look at this now. The I L is going against the loop because the loop is, is a clockwise loop. So it's coming up like this. But you see that I L is coming down and so we're gonna have to subtract off that PD. So it would be minus, right? 30 I L. All right. So that's what we have there. And now we've applied Kirchhoff's second law to loop B. So let's just simplify this equation here. And it will become 0 is equal to 25 plus 5, 30, I2, minus 30, IL. All right. So now we have three equations. We have three equations here now. All right. Okay, so what we're noticing here for 
this equation here, 0 is equal to 30i2 minus 30il, is that we can simplify that even further, right? We can bring over the 30i2 and make it negative 30i2. So now we will have negative 30i2 being equal to negative 30il, and then we can simplify that further. Those go away. And so what I'm gathering from here is that I2 is equal to I1. So that's a very nice simplification that we just um, learned here is that I2 is equal to I1. And so I'm going to actually call that one our equation three, okay? So let's just call that our equation number three that we're working with. All right, so after I see this now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to my very first equation that we obtained from Kirchhoff's first law, and I'm going to just plug this in here, right? So this is what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to substitute equation three into equation one. And so what I'm going to end up with is that I1 is going to be equal to I2, which is IL. Um, So I1 is going to be equal to I2. So I'm going to write back that I2 there. And then where I see IL, I'm going to put I2 for it. So now I'm going to have two I2s here. And so what that means then is that I1 is equal to two I2, right? So there we have another simplification. I'm going to call this my equation four, okay? So I1 is equal to 2I2. I2. I'm going to call that my equation 4. All right. So now I'm going to substitute. Let's follow, follow me here. I'm going to substitute 4 into 2. Okay. Remember, our objective is to find IL. So I'm doing as many simplifications as I can to get to IL. So I'm going to substitute 4 into from equation four that says I1 is equal to two I2. And wherever I see I1 in this equation, I'm gonna put two I2. So now I'm gonna end up with nine being equal to 7.5 times two I2 plus 30 times IL, which we know IL is what? The same as I2. Okay, and so with that, now all I have to do is simplify this out. This is going to be 15i2 when I multiply these, and then I'm going to add that to 30i2. So what do I have now? I have that 9 is equal to 45i2. So now I can solve for i2. So now I say 9 divided by 45 is equal to... I2, which is the same as IL. We said that from equation three, right? That I2 is IL. And that number there is nine over 45. When you work that through, you're gonna come up with a value of 0 0.2 amperes, right? And so that's our final answer there. Our final answer, let me bring it over here, is that IL, which is the current flowing through that variable resistor RL is equal to 0 0.2 amperes. All right, so let's just box that real quick. I'm just gonna box it and that's our answer here. Okay, guys, so keep in mind, this kind of question is worth a lot of marks. This was worth 10 marks, right? And so the key thing here is just to identify your loops, write out your Kirchhoff's first law and your second law in order to get your system of equations. And then all you're doing is substitutions in order to be able to solve for your unknown, which was I1 in this case. And when we did all of that, we came out with a value of 0 0.2 amperes, okay? And so with that, we've come to the end of this question. So definitely give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you look on your left here, you'll see the next video up. And if you look on the right, you'll see our module one playlist. 
where you'll find tons more interesting content that will be helpful in getting you prepared for your exam. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.